in this video I'm going to do one excellence question uh, from um, the topic of differentiation um, and that is an excellence question of NCA level 3 calculus course. So you've got a parametric function find the range <coughs> excuse me find the range of the values of t when the function defined by x is equal to 2t cubed and y is equal to 2t minus 1 squared is concave up. So let me explain what is concave up. So you suppose this is a, this is the y axis and this is the x axis. Say this is your x axis and this is your y axis. And you have a graph like this somewhat. Suppose you've got a graph like this. Now here this point is very crucial which this point is called the point of inflection. Now this part of the curve is called concave up. This is concave up and this part of the curve is called concave down. Now as calculus students, I'm not going to, uh, to prove uh, uh, that the second derivative, the second derivative that is d squared y by dx squared in this region would always be greater than 0. And for this region, the second derivative d squared y by dx squared is less than 0. Now, I uh, used to struggle to remember this very important result. We can prove this, but that's not the focus here. I remember like this, uh, that this is, you can say, uh, the bottom. So it's always good, if you think in a philosophical way, it's always good in this part, because you always, though you're reaching the bottom, even if you're at the bottom, you're from the bottom, you'll go up. So this is positive. So we'll that's how I remember. So the second derivative of the concave up region is always uh, positive. That means if you find the second derivative at any point on this part of the curve, it will be positive. And if you find the second derivative of any point at this part of the curve, it will be less than 0. Okay, so basically they are asking us to find the second derivative. Okay, so yeah. So let us start now. So first you have to differentiate first get the first derivative and then the second derivative. So the first derivative you start like this, so you find dx by dt, you are differentiating with respect to t, the function of x in terms of t. So dx by dt is 6t, 6t squared and dy by dt, the same mm, way you have to use the you differentiate the inside first, so when you differentiate the inside, that will get 2 times the outside, that is 2 times 2t two minus 1. So dy by dt is 4 times 2t minus 1. Now you want to find dy by dx, so we can say, okay, let me scroll this up a little. So dy by dx is dy by dt over dx by dt. Now what is dy by dt? dy by dt is 4 times 2t minus 1 and dx by dt, let me scroll up, is 6t squared. So if you divide both the numerator and the denominator by 2, so dx, dy by dx is 2 times 2t minus 1 over 3t squared, which is 4t minus 2 over 3t squared. So this is pretty easy. Now to find the second derivative, you have to do, understand something very interesting here. So let me change color. So let me take, make it green. So we can say d squared y by dx squared. The second derivative is d by dt of dy by dx, I'll explain later, times dt by dx. See, d, dx or dt are 
all different shields. Okay, so now to explain this, d squared y by dx squared is nothing but d by dx of dy by dx. That means you are differentiating the first function with respect to x, you get the second derivative. So if you look at this, this is this dt and this dt gets cancelled. So basically this is nothing but d by dx of dy by dx dy by dx. This dt, can you see this dt and this dt gets cancelled. So what remains is d by dx of dy by dx. So this is equal to d by dt of dy by dx can be written as d by dt of what is dy by dx? We know it is 4t squared, sorry, 4t, 4, mm, 4t minus 2 over 3t squared times, what is dx by dt? So, dt by dx. We know dx by dt is, so this implies, can I say dt by dx would be 1 over 6t squared. So, I'm going to write this here. So, times dt by dx is 1 over 6t squared. Okay, now you have to differentiate using the quotient rule. So, the quotient rule is differentiate the numerator times it by the denominator minus differentiate the denominator times it by the numerator over the denominator squared. So, it's a long process. So, differentiating the numerator, you get 4 times the denominator, which is 3t squared, minus uh, differentiating the denominator, you get 6t times the numerator, which is 4t minus 2, over 3t squared, the whole squared. times 1 over 60 squared. Okay, so this will become 12t squared minus 24t squared plus 12t over, over this is 9t to the power of 4 times 1 over 60 squared. So, I have just expanded this. So, this is minus 60 times 40 is minus 24 t squared and minus and minus will become plus. So, we are almost there. So, d squared y by dx squared is equal to, this is minus 12 t squared plus 12 t over uh, over this is 9 times 6 is 54 t to the power 6. Okay, so what did we say? When it's concave up, the second derivative is greater than 0. So, we have found the second derivative. So, can we say now, therefore, when concave up, when concave up, we know d squared y by dx squared is greater than 0. Therefore, I can say minus 12t squared plus 12t over 54t to the power 6 is greater than 0. If you multiply or cross multiply this with this, this implies minus 12t squared plus 12t is greater than 0. So, you are almost there. Now, this is a quadratic equation. Okay, now, talking to me or someone on... Yeah, this is a quadratic equation. So, this is, uh, when you graph this, so let me factor out a minus 12t, yeah? So, if you factor out a 12t, you have t minus 1 is greater than 0. So, I will first show you what does this mean graphically. So, let me draw, this is your y axis, this is your x axis. So, this is your y and this is your x. 
Now, you know this is a quadratic equation and it will be an upside down parabola. So, let me draw an upside down parabola. So, yeah, this is what I mean. So let me highlight this. So, what do what am I saying is, say if this is say 0, this is 0 and this is 1. Okay, and this is your graph of minus 12t squared plus 12t. Now, my question is, it's an upside down parabola. I hope you understand how to draw. You can, you can do this on a calculator. I'll show you. Let me show you on a calculator. So, if you get your calculator out, menu, graph, and then you type in minus 12, minus 12 x squared plus 12 x. So, minus 12 x. Let me make the scale a bit bigger, 10 by 10 will do. So, this is a this is your, this is not drawn to scale, so let me make it smaller. So, if you do it initial, okay, so this is what I am saying. So, this is your parabola. So, this is an upside down parabola. So, if you go G solve, the one root is 0, 0, the other root would be 1, 1, okay. This is not drawn to scale. Now, to understand, to answer the question, the question is, when is this graph concave up? Okay. So, we say we concave up, we say it is greater than 0. So, ultimately we come here, when is this greater than 0? So, when this is greater than 0, so this is not your x. You can say this is your, uh, this is your 1 and your, this is your y axis or this is your t. Okay, so at what time is your function greater than 0? So, we can say it is greater than 0 when t is between 0 and 1. Therefore, we can say t should be between 0 and 1. Hopefully, this video has been useful. See you in the next video.